I still don't have any dubstep music. So if you know any artists that want to contribute, please let me know. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Matt and welcome to my recording and streaming setup overview. Some of you are asking for information on what I use and how I use it when dealing with video content and streaming on YouTube. So that's what we're going to do today. We're not going to go into major detail of what each application does specifically. Uh, we can do different videos for those, but today is just going to touch over what I use in the process of making content specifically even this video uh, for example so we're going to start with the first program which is DxTory I'm on version 2.0.117 if you don't know what DxTory is it's basically an alternative to Fraps and the link will be in the description for all of these programs that I'm using today with information on how you can access them or purchase them as well if they are not free so for DxTory uh, we can't really see target information right now because I don't actually have a game open but you would see specific information regarding what game you're playing and the window size and its process ID and different uh, different things dealing with that exact uh, program uh, this tab really doesn't matter it's just overlay settings uh, this one is a, an important tab I have it specifically set up to record uh, to one drive and this drive is dedicated strictly for video recordings I don't run any applications on it I don't have any programs uh, saved there nothing writes to it unless I'm running DxTory or another recording program such as Camtasia Studio or uh, Fraps things like that now the reason I do this is you want to keep your recordings and the, the stream of recording data separate from the programs that you're running so all of my programs that I that I use are on another drive my system is on another drive so Windows 7 my actual install is on its own drive so everything's separated and it really helps as far as speed goes and that's how we get no lag that's how we get better quality in our in our videos from the nice smooth data writing to a drive I always tell people you want to record to a separate drive. Don't record to the same one. You, it can cause so many problems and you may not realize it until you try using another drive and you'll see a whole world of difference. Um, this one right now is pushing at 197 a second. It's not too great, not too bad. Uh, I'd rather it be pushing at about 300 or so, uh, but this is just a single drive, uh, an SSD. I usually have uh, two SSDs uh, linked together that it writes to both at the same time and you'll double your speed so I'll be writing close to 400 megabits per second and that that's for another time so we're just gonna move on really quick I don't want to go too much detail uh, this is just for hotkeys this is where I actually uh, love DxTory so I have a codec specifically chosen for recording Minecraft content. Now I may not use this codec for another game, but for Minecraft this is what I have. With DxTory you have a default codec, and I don't want to go into too much detail as I said, but just to go over this really quick, DxTory's default codec is at least on par with Fraps, and then when you choose settings like high quality or RGB, RGB excuse me, it's above Fraps. It, it, the quality is amazing and I don't use compression or anything like that. Now I started out using this but then I found Lagerith lossless codec and this thing blew me away. It is exactly the same as DxTory's uh, quality but the file size is less and it's lossless which I don't want to try to explain the, the whole process of having lossless data but uh, my color mode is YB12 and I use multi-threading because I have a six core processor and we're going to cancel out of that I record at 30 frames per second regardless of the game I'm playing even if I'm gonna play Battlefield 3 and I'm, I'm running it at, at max settings I'm gonna record footage at 30 frames I don't really need 60 frames per second uh, output is file output right now for recording if I'm gonna stream to XSplit and uh, to YouTube I will use direct show output instead of file output so I would choose that instead but for right now we're just gonna leave it as file output my file format is AVI I use RawCap when I'm pushing to multiple drives and you can look all this up I'm not going to go into detail on what that does 
but for the most part we run an AVI. I always include my mouse cursor so you guys can see what's going on. I don't synchronize video FPS. Uh, I do scale my window, or not my windows, but my footage to 1280 by 720. The reason I do that is I run it in a 16 by 10 monitor. So when I play games, I have to run them in windowed at either 1600 by 900 or 1280 by 720. So either way, I'm giving you guys uh, 720 HD footage. Here's the second part that I love about DxTory. It records multi-channel audio. What this means is I can record uh, from my Blue Snowball, I can record the speakers, I can record my headset, and I can record my headset microphone. And when I put it into the editor, uh, or Sony Vegas for example, I will have four audio channels that I can edit independently. Fraps doesn't do that. Fraps gives you, I think, two channel at the most. I don't really remember. I haven't used it in a long time. Uh, but I love the robustness of this. I can change these values for each individual channel. It's so great when you're dealing with multiple people on Skype, audio for a game, audio for yourself, audio for uh, who you're talking to in another uh, program through Skype or Vent, things like that. It's really, really nice. Uh, screenshots we don't care about. Advanced settings, I have everything unchecked right now. There's a couple things I turn on. Uh, GPU fix code every now and then because I have uh, multiple graphics cards running at the same time in uh, in Crossfire. And global settings we don't worry about. So that's DxTory. That's what I use for recording my footage of m every game or application and it's what I use to grab the screen of that game when I want to uh, stream with XSplit. Excuse me. So speaking of XSplit we're going to move on to XSplit Broadcaster and like I said all this information will be in the description. You can check these programs out if you don't already have them. And we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail like I said before, but the way I have it is I have multiple scenes for multiple things. So when you guys see me live streaming, I have my AFK window up. If I need to go do something and, you know, BRB or whatever. I have DxTory, which is a scene uh, for capturing that screen that it's recording uh, in whatever game I'm playing. So you guys never see my desktop. You never see me go into the internet. You never see me go to Skype. You only see the game, and that's what I love about uh, XSplit and DxTory combined is it restricts it, so you're always seeing the content, so you never leave it, and you guys don't actually have to see me on a web browser, and you're like, what, what is this crap? I want to see the game. Uh, there's my AFK window. I have a desktop scene. I have one specifically for Xbox 360, which deals with my capture card. Uh, I have a separate card that captures Xbox 360 uh, video and then it runs through XSplit and I can grab the camera, which I don't have it set up right now. But as you see, DxTory Video 1 is an actual camera that XSplit will grab. The same thing happens in Xbox 360 scene where I'll have my Avermedia HD recorder. It has a camera. So those are how my scenes are set up. Uh, we can look at my channels here really quick. I have uh, Twitch.tv, which I don't use anymore. A local recording and then YouTube is uh, for the Pixel Tater channel. Pixel Tater channel. Wow, if I could talk today. We're going to edit this and take a look at this really quick. These don't really matter. They change with every video uh, that I live stream. The presets don't change usually. My quality is set at 7. I use a 900 max bitrate and a buffer of 900. I make sure they match. I use the default stage resolution. And here's where it's really nice. I use an audio quality of 44.1. 16-bit stereo, and I bit my bit rate is 128. Now, sometimes I will run 192, but most of the time I'll run 128. Uh, that's why I have usually really good audio quality, and you guys don't have any issues with that. Um, I really pride myself in the quality of my audio when I'm streaming. Uh, the codec is AAC. I don't use Speaks. It's trash. Uh, sorry for anybody that does use it, but I can't stand it. So we're going to cancel out of these two. And that's really it. The only other thing I can say is for my resolutions that I push to uh, for either YouTube or Twitch is 1280 by 720. This is pure HD. I don't use uh, 768 by 432 anymore because now that I'm streaming on YouTube, I leave the video stream to uh, process and then you can watch it afterwards. So when you're watching me live uh, in real time, you can only see me in 360p, but with me streaming at 1280 by 720 when it processes in YouTube afterwards you can watch the recording at 720 
so you guys never have uh, I, I never have a video excuse me on my channel that is crappy quality it's always a minimum of 7, uh, 720 HD I usually don't do 1080 because my monitor doesn't support 1080 it's a 16 by 10 monitor so that'd be really hard for me to do so if you guys are just dying for 1080 content I can probably make that happen but 720 in my opinion is standard and just fine for what I want to do my frame rate for streaming also I meant I forgot to mention is 25 frames per second now if you remember in DX Tori I record at 30 frames and my camera that DX Tori uses to go to XSplit is 30 frames but when I push content to you guys it's only at 25 frames you you can't notice that you don't see the change it's very very minute and it still looks just the same so we're gonna minimize that we're gonna move on to the third program which is Sony Vegas Pro 11 now I used to use Adobe Premiere Pro uh, out of the CS 5.5 I think suite I can't remember what it is I still have it but I've been trying to move over to Vegas and the past like five videos I guess have all been done in Vegas and you guys can look up videos on, on information on Vegas but I'll just give you some specific information on what I use I have a template for Minecraft that I use for uh, rendering out my videos and this is strictly for render only settings I render at 1280 by 720 and my pixel as aspect ratio is 1 my frame rate instead of streaming content this is for recorded content is 29.97 not 30 frames it just helps a little bit and you don't notice it because YouTube processing is only 29.97 it won't ever go 30 frames uh, my pixel format is 8-bit full resolution rendering quality is good uh, I don't change any of these the motion blur or the deinterlace methods I leave all that the same uh, audio is at 48 Hertz uh, my bit depth is 16 resample is is set good I don't use any uh, stereo buses or anything like that um, and that's recorded file folders you guys don't have to worry about that crap so let's hit cancel and I don't have any test footage to show you guys but those are my project settings and if I go to I can't render because I don't have any footage right now I was gonna show you my render settings but unfortunately I don't have any example footage so that would be kind of difficult um, the only other thing I wanted to go over really quick so this video is not super long is the effects that I use when I'm working with uh, GLSL shaders in Minecraft the big ones that I use are color curves uh, color curves will make colors really pop out and they'll make darks dark and the lighter colors light and it really gives you nice contrast uh, the only other things I use on a usual video basis are color corrector uh, brightness and contrast and then there's another one which I use sometimes I can't remember where it is uh, oh crap oh sharpen uh, sometimes I'll use sharpen depending on where it is and what a recording is uh, you know caves or structures or an open environment or like in skyblock when I did the 1 by 2 by 1 series that was a real pain for me to edit because it was really bright all the time or it was really dark all the time so I had to split it up into a bunch of pieces and make sure everything was balanced and normalized and all that fun stuff so uh, those are some quick uh, suggestions if you're using Sony Vegas Pro 11 and it works in Pro 10 as well it really hasn't changed um, so other than that that's that's all I use guys I don't have any other special magical <laughs> software that gives me quality content or gives me some good streaming content uh, everything else is basically me trying to interact with you guys and have a good time hopefully this helped you and hopefully I get some feedback on this if you guys want to see a video or a series specifically on editing or streaming or how to get your stream optimized for YouTube or how to get it optimized for Twitch leave me a comment send me a message and tell me that you want to see that I, even if it's one person I'll do a video I don't care um, that's the whole point of doing this is I want to interact with you guys and get everyone involved I don't want to just sit here and do my own thing and wait for you guys to watch it that's kinda of stupid so anyway as usual thank you guys very much for supporting me don't forget to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash pixeltator and leave me a comment like I said I appreciate it and I will see you guys next time